Mr. President, talking about le lessons learned, some Ghanaians are suggesting, when you listen to the radio, you watch TVs, some Ghanaians are suggesting that you have proven to be a peace-loving man and that the election is over. You should just concede, bring the country together so we can work out our differences from now onwards. What do you tell them? Let me make one point clear. I'm not going to do anything that jeopardizes the peace of this country. So I'm peace loving. I'm not going to incite people to go, you know, destroy things and do anything. I won't do that. I'm peace loving, but I think that we've reached a point in our democracy where we need to establish the principles of our democracy and make sure that we uphold them at all times. Nanado in his uh, period in office has shown that he's not willing to abide by democratic principles. Why do you say that? I mean, a lot of the things he's done over the last four years, I mean, show clearly that he does not believe in, you know, democracy. His misuse of the military and the security services and national security to threaten journalists and, you know, just create a general atmosphere, you know, that is you know, unpleasant to our democratic principles is something that I do not agree with. And if my principled objection to a very flawed election and to the circumstances surrounding the, uh, uh, the environment, the environment surrounding the election, you know, will make us reestablish our democratic foundations and create a better foundation for the future, I'm willing to go that route. You have a lot of friends heads of state, top officials, everywhere. Since this election, have they reached out to you and what is the conversation with them about how the elections went? Many of them have called me and asked me, you know, um, what, what is happening. And I've explained my side to, to them. And um, they've listened to me, you know, um, understandingly. And um, of course, the question they always ask me, so what are your next steps, yeah? Um, I can't determine those next steps alone. I led a political party, and so we need to take that decision together. And so I normally tell them that well, we're in the process of establishing exactly what our case is against what went on, and um, at the appropriate time, we will put that out. So, Mr. President, what is your relationship with the current president? Because I saw you at the uh, peace uh, signing um, days before the election. Um, you guys were chatting jovially. What would you say is the current relationship between you and the current president? Well, um, I haven't spoken to him or seen him since um, the, the peace pact we signed. Yeah, so I wouldn't know how he feels towards me. But uh, for me, um, he's the incumbent president, yeah, and um, I don't have any animosity against him. Mm. So, Mr. President, what will be your message to the people of Ghana based on what you have seen, what you have gleaned, the evidence that you have seen, and the independent inquiry that you and your party seek? Our electoral rules give us uh, 72 hours within which to declare results. The first thing I noticed was wrong was this. Electoral Commission came out and said that they were going to declare results within 24 hours. And I cautioned them, and I said no. I mean, if you look at the collation process and what goes into it, you need to do a thorough and accurate job of crunching the numbers. And so don't set yourself a 24-hour you know, deadline because it gives us 72 hours. It gives us enough time to check and cross-check. And you must not sacrifice accuracy and thoroughness you know, on the altar of speed to declare results. And that's why they've made all these mistakes. Mr. President, your final words to the people of Ghana, West Africa, and to the entire world. My final word is that democracy is our best guarantee for unleashing the creative potential of our nations because it creates the environment for people to be able to participate in how they are governed and we need to take it seriously and make sure that we get the tenets of our constitutional rule and democracy right. You know, um, when presidents start to use the military and the security services to oppress their people, um, we shouldn't think that they are oppressing just their political opponents, but they are oppressing the whole nation because if 
a citizen is oppressed, it comes to our collective oppression because it's him today, it's you tomorrow.